Hello everybody and welcome to Jeff the Pharmacist. Today I wanted to talk about my favorite oral anti-diabetic drug and that is metformin. So um, I like metformin a lot because it's it's really interesting how many different things it does in the body and how it was discovered and it's just very fascinating for me. So it was discovered in um, the early 1900s um, when scientists were studying a old herbal product called goat's rue. Goat's rue was used in the Middle Ages to treat symptoms of diabetes. Um, I don't think they understood diabetes uh, like we do, but they were trying to treat symptoms of it and they used goat's rue and it was actually somewhat effective. Um, so goat's rue or French lily um, is what it's called and the scientists took the French lily and they isolated the chemical that has the glucose lowering capability and that's called guanine. So guanine was found to be too toxic um, but they took two guanines together and they made biguanide and we have metformin. Now metformin <clears throat> Is very interesting because of it of its mechanism so let me backtrack a little and just talk about exactly what's happening not exactly but basically what's happening in type 2 diabetes so in type 2 diabetes you um, you have a uh, it's you're either not producing enough insulin or your body's not responding to the insulin effectively so you have a, a gland behind the stomach called the pancreas. The pancreas releases insulin in the bloodstream in response to food that you eat or some other reasons perhaps but mostly for food. So when you eat a meal insulin is released as your body absorbs the glucose insulin is re released to tell tissues in your body to take in some of that glucose and store it as energy or use it as energy. Um, so what's occurring in diabetes is that pancreas, either the pancreas is, is uh, defective be because of genetic reasons or you know you're just you're, you haven't been treating your body very well and it's just tired and it can't release enough or um, you're releasing enough and the tissues in your body have been getting hit with too much insulin and they're and they can't um, effectively respond to the insulin or just because of genetic reasons your tissues aren't take aren't using that ins insulin effectively to take in the glucose so it's either you're not making enough insulin or your body's not responding to the insulin or both so what metformin does first of all when you eat a meal it releases glucose in your into your bloodstream what metformin does is it blocks some of that glucose from being released. The second thing it does is your your body actually creates glucose naturally. So your liver in a process called gluconeogenesis and you don't have to remember that. It's not on a test or anything. It, it might be if you're going to pharmacy school, but it's not on any tests for this channel. So when the when the liver re releases sugar what metformin will do is it'll actually slow that down not stop it completely but it'll slow it down and that'll actually help decrease your your regular glucose level and but it won't in most cases it won't drop it dangerously it'll just keep it lower than it normally would be which is in most type 2 diabetics is a good thing and the third thing it does which is crazy is it makes your tissues more sensitive to insulin so I've tried to find why it does it or how it does it, but it's not really well understood why it must be occurring on some, some genetic level. So it's a very fascinating drug. It was a gift that nature gave us, um, basically. Um, and you'll find if you, if you look at how drugs came about, a lot of times it wasn't some guy in a lab, you know, just stumbling upon it. It was actually studying something that maybe our our ancestors kind of were knew about and and trying to distill uh, something from that I'm I mean there are actual people that they go into the Amazon and they look for you know ancient tribal remedies and try to discover if there's something there that can be marketed in the United States 
and sold for twenty billion dollars. So, just wanted to say like how how metformin is taken it. It has a kind of a nasty side effect um, that's uncomfortable, and that is it can give you diarrhea. And like half the people that take it experience diarrhea while taking metformin. It can give you nausea and vomiting. But the good thing is, is your body adjusts to it. And after a while, most people don't experience those side effects. So what happens is when you first start it, the doctor will give you a lower dose, like 500 milligrams in the morning with a meal and a glass of water. And later on, it'll take you up and take you up until you're at a dose that is about where where you should be. And the second extremely rare, very, 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 very rare side effect is called lactic acidosis. So if your body's under some unusual stress, if you're, um, if you're going into liver failure or something, sometimes metformin can trigger lactic acidosis. So in that process where the liver is releasing sugar into your, into your system, one of the things that are the ingredients to creating that sugar is called lactate. So usually there's going to be a little bit of an excess lactate when you're taking metformin and your body will clear that up through the other, other processes. Um, if you're sick or there's another kind of something else going on, you can actually have too much lactate floating around in your blood and that can actually cause your blood, blood to become acidic, which is dangerous. It can be fatal and that's why there's a black box warning on metformin and why it's recommended that somebody talks to you about it. But it's extremely, extremely rare. It's like less than one in a hundred thousand people um, will ever experience it. So it's very rare, but they just want, you should probably just be aware of it. So it's also recommended that you don't drink alcohol while taking metformin because um, it can increase your chances of that lactic acidosis. And also if you have really, if, if you're going into um, kidney failure, your kidneys are not functioning very well, usually they'll take you off metformin because Metformin goes through your kidneys, and that's how um, that's how it's ex it gets out of your out of your blood. And your doctor will usually look at whether metformin is effective by testing your fasting blood glucose, see how you're doing with that, and also your A1C. And just a kind of a note on what A1C is. A1C is actually uh, basically an average of your of your glucose level for the past three months. So I kind of would like it if they would just stop talking about A1C and talk about average blood glucose because that would make more sense because it's like what's the difference between 6 and 5.7 just just on a like it just kind of doesn't really resonate as well as like this is my average blood glucose after the last three months that makes more sense to me. But um, so I think they're moving in that direction, but I think that's better just to talk about the average blood glucose. And there are charts, like charts on the internet you can look at and it'll show what your A1C is and what that kind of corresponds to what your average blood glucose is. So you can say, oh crud, you know, that's kind of high. Like I shouldn't, I actually do need to get that down instead of just saying, oh, my A1C is like 7.9 is fine or, or what have you. So I hope this uh, video is helpful for you guys. Um, I want to thank you for uh, listening to, uh, for, for watching Jeff the Pharmacist, and please like and subscribe. Thanks a lot.